Hello, everyone. We'll just wait a couple more minutes before we start tonight. Okay, I think we'll get started. Uh, welcome everyone to the third public information center for the Soper Springs Secondary Plan, which is located in North Bowmanville. Uh, my name is Emily Schaefer, and I am the planner and municipalities project manager for this project. Next slide, please. So before we get started, I'd like to begin with the municipalities land acknowledgement. The municipality of Clarington is situated within the traditional and treaty territory of the Mississaugas and Chippewas of the Anishinaabek, known today as the Williams Treaty's First Nations. Our work on these lands acknowledges their resilience and their longstanding contributions to the area, now known as the municipality of Clarington. So now I will start with a brief introduction to the project team from the municipality of Clarington. Lisa Backus, Acting Manager of Community Planning and Economic Development, and Karen Richardson, Manager of Development Engineering. Our lead consultant on this project is SGL Planning and Design. Catherine J is the lead project manager. And Catherine, if you could introduce your team, that would be great. Good evening, everyone. Uh, this evening, uh, I'm joined by uh, Shika Jagwani from our office, uh, Radita um, from TYLN, and uh, Steve Hollingworth as well will be joining us um, to answer any questions this evening. Thanks, Catherine. And so the purpose of tonight's meeting is to share three land use options for the Soper Springs secondary plan and hear your feedback, as well as answer any questions you may have. Uh, we will also present a set of evaluation criteria that we'll be using as a tool to help us select the best land use option. And we wanna hear your thoughts and ideas on what we're sharing tonight. Next slide, please. Oh. So throughout tonight's presentation, we ask that you enter any questions and comments using the chat feature. So you can find this chat feature. There's an icon located at the bottom of your screen and it looks like a chat icon. Um, and if you're having trouble locating this, you just move your cursor and you should be able to see the chat icon. And then you can type in your questions. If you are participating over the phone, uh, please press star nine and, to raise your hand and we will, so that we will know you have a question. And feel free to post your questions and comments throughout the presentation using the chat. We will do our best to answer these at the end. Okay, so for a quick overview of the presentation tonight, first we'll start with what a secondary plan is, where the Soper Springs secondary plan is located in Clarington, the vision for this area, the project timeline, and what we've heard so far. Next, we will share three land use options 
um, that will show ideas for the location and type of residential housing, parks, trails, and roads. When we then we'll present how we're going to evaluate which options are best as the project moves forward. The presentation will conclude with a question answer, answer period where you can where we will answer your questions. And there will also be some live polls throughout uh, so that you can participate and share your feedback. Catherine will explain in, in a few minutes here uh, how you can participate in these live polls. Next slide, please. Okay, so first, for those of you who are not familiar, I will explain what a secondary plan is. Uh, a secondary plan is a policy document that's used to manage growth in a specific area. Um, the type of elements a secondary plan includes are residential, commercial land uses, for example, roads and transportation networks, parks and open spaces, community facilities, servicing, as well as natural heritage and cultural heritage. Essentially, we're creating guidelines for development. And this map here shows you where Soper Springs Secondary Plan is in Clarington. The green arrow points to the secondary plan area shown in a dark brown. And Liberty Street is located to the west and Concession Road 3 is located to the south where the cursor is pointing. Next slide, please. So here's a closer up map to show you where the secondary plan is. The project area is highlighted in, in red and it shows natural protection, or sorry, environmental protection areas in green and Soper Creek is shown on this map in blue. Okay, so now I will turn things over to Catherine and she's going to explain how you can participate this evening. Uh, as I mentioned, you can participate by answering or typing your questions in the chat and also through live polls. Okay, Catherine. Thanks, Emily. Uh, Emily uh, had explained about um, participating in the question and answer. Uh, we'll put this uh, slide back up um, towards the end when we get to the question and answer, particularly if you're participating on the phone, so you'll know how to uh, raise your hand if you have any questions. Um, and just a reminder, uh, so everybody knows that the meeting is being recorded um, only for a uh, minute taking and internal um, use if we want to go back and check on questions or comments. So as Emily mentioned, tonight um, we're going to have um, some interactive um, questions and uh, there's a couple ways in which you can participate. You can scan the QR code that's on the screen or you could type in the website here, it's www.menti.com um, and enter the code. Uh, if by chance you do have any issues, you can enter in the chat and she can, can see if she can help you. Um, but also just to let everybody know um, that uh, there will be a survey uh, that reflects the same questions we're going through this evening um, on uh, Clarington's uh, website after the presentation. So if you feel you missed anything or if you wanna um, add some more comments, um, you'll have another opportunity to do that as well. So we're gonna give this uh, first one a shot. Um, and the first one is just for us to get to know about uh, who's participating this evening. We're still not lucky enough to have our open houses uh, in person. So um, if you go to the, the website and type in the code, there it comes, we'll, we'll see on the, uh, the screen. Um, and so for each of the questions, I'll, I'll give everybody 
uh, a few minutes to participate once I see kind of um, a majority of people um, answering, then we'll move on. Um, so we have uh, a few people participating. So we'll give it a few more minutes. Oh, there comes some more. Um, so we've got a number of residents, uh, and it looks like we've got, we're dominated by consultants this evening. <laughs> so as part of the process moving forward, we're working on um, developing a vision to help guide uh, the secondary plan and the development of the uh, options and the eventual preferred option. So we put the um, vision up on the screen here to create a community that celebrates and enhances the history, character and natural environment of Clarington. The built form parks, trails and connection to nature will foster a sense of place for the residents and visitors. The neighborhoods of Soper Springs will promote a positive image of the municipality demonstrating a high quality of sustainability both through site and architectural design. Soper Springs will enhance the well-being of residents both present and future. And so when we uh, work on developing uh, these visions we like to get feedback um, from everyone. So here's another question with regards to the vision, is there a specific word or words in the vision that you feel are key or are there other key words of the, the vision or the concept that we've missed that maybe should be added? So again, if you go to the Mentimeter, um, you should be able to type in some key words and uh, through the magic of technology, once you've done that, we're gonna get a really fun wordle that comes up on the screen. Um, so if there are some words in here that uh, that are speaking to you that you think are important, you can type those in. I think uh, you have the ability to type in up to five um, different words. <clears throat> so again, we'll, we'll give everybody a few minutes to um, participate. Okay. Oh, I see a few more coming in, so we'll give everybody just a few more minutes. Okay. <clears throat> Good. So a lot of good keywords. Uh, access to nature is, is one that we've heard throughout the process, connection to nature, parks, trails, a walk walkability. These are all um, key words or themes that we've, we've heard from the beginning of the, the project. So that's good. So just to give everybody um, an idea of where we are, those of you who have been following the project along, this uh, slide will look very familiar. Um, 
we've finished phase one and, and we're wrapping up phase two with tonight's uh, engagement. Um, as part of phase two, uh, we've had a couple of steering committee um, meetings. We've prepared the land use alternatives um, that we're gonna present in the presentation. Uh, we're gonna talk about the evaluation criteria and measures um, and get any more uh, feedback on what we've done to date. So as uh, part of phase one, uh, and this is posted on the um, uh, municipality's website, uh, the summary of engagement, uh, we're highlighting here um, some key, what we heard um, comments and questions. Uh, if you've been following along um, from the previous um, PIC, some of these questions and comments may sound familiar. Um, innovative stormwater and low, low impact development should be considered. The secondary plan should be consistent with the sub-watershed study. Uh, we had questions um, regarding future roads and roundabouts, which we'll talk um, about further in the presentation. We had questions about how trails will be provided. Um, people were looking for priority of sidewalks, trails, multi-use paths, and parks. Uh, and uh, there was comments or uh, uh, suggestions around providing some commercial in the area for daily use. So in the preparation of these alternatives, uh, there's a number of things that we look for, that we look to, um, that happen throughout phase one in particular. Um, we look at the background studies, provincial policies, regions policies and studies, um, the sub watershed study, which is I'm running concurrently with our process, Clarington's official plan policies, um, Clarington's green initiatives. Uh, and as I mentioned, the feedback and um, comments we've received through the previous um, engagements all come together to help us develop uh, the three alternatives. And what you'll see on these three alternatives is that there's what we're calling some common elements. Um, so all the uh, land use um, alternatives provide for a minimum of gross density of 50 people and jobs per hectare. Uh, that comes out of uh, Clarington's official plan. You'll see this um, big thing, yellow arrow, which is delineating um, the local corridor designation, which runs along concession three. We'll talk a little bit about, more about that. Uh, the blue dots are the conceptual um, storm pond locations. And these are going to be further refined um, through the alternatives, as well as uh, input from the subwatershed study. The dark green is the uh, environmental protection areas. Um, this area is uh, reflected uh, uh, in, in the OP and based on the Soper Springs subwatershed study. The blue triangles um, are the cultural heritage resources, which are currently being proposed to remain. And uh, you'll see the circle in the corner and all the alternatives that represents a future uh, roundabout that's being uh, proposed uh, by the region. Uh, so, as a high level, I'm going to go through uh, each alternative and then uh, break it down further and go through the different uh, areas that you see in, in the alternatives. Um, so this is alternative one. And on each of the alternatives, you see the different uh, land use categories. So the, the um, Solid orange is the medium density along the local corridor or low rise, which is two to four stories. Uh, the orange striped is uh, the uh, mid rise uh, along the local corridor, which is five to six stories. The solid yellow is the low density. Um, the yellow stripes is the um, townhouse. 
The light green is parks. Um, what you'll see too are two different road types. So you'll see a solid gray, which is proposed collector and a striped gray, which is um, potential future uh, local road connections. As well, you'll see some trails. Um, so you'll see off-road trails, which are the dotted red lines. And you'll see a, a kind of this brownie color, which is proposed uh, multi-use path. And if I slip, I might call it an MUP. So that's what I'm what I'm talking about. Um, and on as, on each of the alternatives as well, you'll see a five-minute walking distance. So that's what those uh, light colored circles are that um, from the center out, it's, it's a five minute walk. So this is alternative one. Um, it has one large central park as a focus um, to the plan. And it uh, is focusing density uh, along uh, Liberty and concession. Um, Mearns Avenue uh, is extended uh, as one collector that um, goes through the plan uh, and out onto uh, Liberty. Uh, a majority of this plan you'll see is the, the yellow or the low density um, with uh, some townhouses proposed. Alternative two, you'll notice, uh, introduces uh, another uh, land use, which is the neighborhood center, which you'll see in pink. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in detail uh, when we go through each of the uh, land use uh, designations. Um, so this one proposes uh, a neighborhood center on uh, Liberty. It uh, proposes higher densities surrounding this neighborhood center. It has three smaller parks located throughout the um, plan. Um, and it has uh, medium density uh, mid rise in the local corridor adjacent to uh, low density. Uh, in this one, um, Mearns Avenue comes through the plan and connects out to um, the existing uh, street uh, to the west. Uh, and again, there's um, a proposed uh, local network um, that could connect throughout the rest of the plan. Um, and maybe I should just clarify, the reason for that is um, when you're developing a secondary plan, when this, the preferred alternative is chosen uh, and this gets trans uh, translated into policy, uh, you'll only see the collector roads on those schedules. You, you won't see the local roads. That's more of a, a detailed subdivision um, matter. And then we have alternative three again. Uh, you'll see the pink uh, on this plan. Uh, this one has a central uh, neighborhood center uh, adjacent uh, with a neighborhood park uh, that is forming the center of one of these neighborhoods. This one proposes two collectors. So we've got Mearns um, going through uh, on one side of the uh, EPA and then a proposed collector going through um, the lands on, on the northeast side. Um, I've got some idea of how local roads would connect in. This one has two um, even sized uh, neighborhood parks. Uh, and this one proposes uh, low rise uh, medium density along the local uh, corridor that's two to four stories uh, and townhouses uh, up in this area as well. So we've, we've broken this down just to give you some more detail about um, each of the different um, components. So as I mentioned, the pink is the neighborhood center. It is proposed in uh, alternative two and alternative three. It's approximately two hectares in size and the intent is to accommodate a mix of uses uh, including up to 5,000 square meters uh, of retail. 
There's some images here of, of what um, that area could look like. Uh, and as you saw in the overall uh, alternatives uh, for alternative two, it's on uh, Liberty. And for alternative three, it's um, interior to the plan. And we've got another question to ask. So if you could uh, log in, which location um, do you think is more appropriate? So we've got the one that's along Liberty here, and we've got the one that's more uh, internal or central um, to the overall plan. Um, so we can mark in the Mentimeter. Um, We'll just wait a few minutes for everybody to put their answers in. And also, if, if uh, anybody missed it, um, you can also put your uh, thoughts and questions uh, on, the, on the municipality's website. We'll just wait a few more minutes. Out of the five people, it looks like the majority is uh, likes it along Liberty. Um, so thank you for that. So the local corridor, uh, as you saw in the common element slide, it's uh, located all along um, concession three. Uh, as per uh, the OP, it's approximately 100 meters deep. Um, so you can, you can see the line that runs across here. Um, this is alternative one. Um, so proposed to have uh, medium density, low rise in the solid orange and uh, medium density mid rise in the stripes. Um, and the density in this area would be higher than what's um, proposed for the rest of the plan, which is a density of 60 units per hectare. Gives you some images that give you an idea of, of what this area might look like. Now, this is alternative two. <clears throat> so this one proposes uh, all uh, medium density low rise. Um, and this is alternative three, which proposes uh, just a little bit of the mid rise, but uh, mostly uh, low rise. So another question for everyone. What dis distribution of medium density land uses is more appropriate in the local corridor? So what do you, what kind of built form do you, do you wanna see primarily five to six stories? two to four stories um, or an equal distribution of mid rise and low rise. So this would be in those pockets um, adjacent uh, to concession three. Give everybody a few minutes. Maybe we should have given out prizes for, for, <laughs> for which team can get the uh, bars to go the highest, the fastest. All right, so of the seven people, primarily mid rise, which is five to six stories. Uh, is preferred. So low density, uh, which is a uh, majority of the plan, uh, the solid yellow um, uh, is would be singles and semis, townhouses. Um, so what's important to note uh, as, 
as per the policies that the townhouses make up about 10 to 12 percent and that's consistent in uh, each of the alternatives um, so this is alternative one which is a majority of uh, low density throughout with the suggestion of townhouses right adjacent to the local corridor and um, adjacent to one of these small parkettes closer to uh, Liberty Street. This is alternative two. Uh, again, um, putting the townhouses closer to Liberty, um, kind of clustering them together uh, and then low density um, throughout the rest of the plan. And alternative uh, three suggests a different location for townhouses um, with the low density in the remainder uh, of the area. Some images um, of what the low density built form could look like. Uh, and another question, um, do you want to see townhouses grouped together or spread out throughout the low density area of the study? Um, and so if anyone is needing a refresher on how, how to participate in these polls, you go to www.menti.com. It's shown at the top of the screen and you type in the code, the number code at the top, and you'll be able to participate in the live polls. I'll give everybody a couple more minutes to participate. Um, Okay, looks like it's fairly even with regards to grouped and spread out. So um, when we get responses like that, we'll work through the process to see you know, what makes sense as far as the preferred plan and, and where the townhouses would best be suited. Parks. Um, so in each of the alternatives, uh, we've suggested different uh, sizes and uh, locations for parks. Um, that gives us the ability to, to evaluate uh, each of them to see what makes sense to accommodate uh, the facilities that are needed in this area. Uh, so alternative one has one uh, large park that may be um, uh, adjacent or incorporate a storm pond with a smaller parkette. Um, and each of the um, alternatives right now are showing approximately four hectares of park and that quantum of park uh, will be con confirmed uh, as we move through the process and do the evaluation. For alternative two, this one has um, three uh, equal sized um, parks um, that are equally distributed throughout the plan. And alternative three, um, this one has two parks that are similar in size. Uh, and this one here has a neighborhood park that would be adjacent to um, a, com a neighborhood commercial area. So another question for everyone, uh, what size and distribu distribution of parks is more appropriate for Soper Springs? So, so which of these do you think um, makes sense or you'd like um, to see? Give everybody just a couple 
more seconds to input. Okay. Thanks. Uh, thanks for uh, answering. Looks like uh, smaller parks of equal size, and then two parks of equal size, and then one smaller park and one larger park. So active transportation, um, as you noted on what we heard, uh, one of the things uh, that we heard, particularly at our previous um, public open house, uh, was the importance of trails. Um, so in the different alternatives, uh, we've looked at uh, off-road trails and uh, multi-use paths, uh, which would be adjacent to a boulevard, in particular along the collector proposed collector roads, um, and the off-road trails and being able to connect into the existing uh, trail system that Clarington has. So in alternative one, uh, you can see there's a multi-use path pro proposed along um, the collector and uh, the idea that there could be one on uh, uh, any of the local roads as well. And then the dotted uh, red shows where off-road trails um, could potentially be. Um, so alternative two shows a di slightly different configuration of the off-road and uh, it's a different configuration for the MUP uh, only because it's following um, this collector road. Uh, as well uh, for alternative three, um, you'll see uh, similar um, and the trails are going to be a really important uh, piece um, to implement um, to allow people to connect um, to the existing areas of the municipality. And uh, roads, we've talked uh, quite a bit about the roads already. Uh, as I mentioned uh, in this um, slide, you can see that the collector road is in pink and uh, suggested or proposed local roads are, are in the uh, yellow color. And on alternative one, you have Mer of one collector, uh, Merns Avenue, and a number of proposed um, local roads. Uh, one of the big uh, things that we'll be looking at is, is how we get across the EPA, and that'll be part of our evaluation. Alternative two, uh, it's a slightly different configuration of the collector road uh, and uh, local road. And alternative three has two collector roads, uh, which provides us, you know, an opportunity to compare them and, and uh, do a proper evaluation. Uh, so the last piece is uh, what we do with these uh, different alternatives. So we have to evaluate them. Um, and what, what we do is uh, we prepare evaluation criteria and measures. This is based on uh, the background work, um, the, what we've heard, uh, also um, policy um, helps direct us, um, the themes and principles that you saw in the background work as part of phase one. Uh, the sustainability and green principles, um, all these come together um, to form uh, this evaluation and criteria measures um, that we will use to identify the preferred elements. So what's important is uh, we don't choose just one uh, land use alternative. Uh, we'll look at all the different components in each of the alternatives and uh, although a one alternative may come out stronger in the valuation, uh, what we typically find is we are going to take um, pieces of the different alternatives that will make up the preferred alternative uh, and uh, also make changes based on any input that we receive. 
Um, so just to give you an idea of, of how we go about um, looking at the different components, uh, there's different principles. Uh, so within the built environment, provide for the efficient use of land within the creation of a compact, complete, connected and walkable community. Um, so we'll look at these different measures uh, and what you'll see come forward as part of phase three will be an evaluation matrix where you'll see these, you'll see the rationale, you'll see how um, the evaluation plays out and what different components of each plan um, may have come through uh, as the preferred um, so in the built environment, we're looking for the options, the elements that create a walkable community, provide a variety of housing, uh, different land mix, uh, land use mix, um, to be able to know, you know, where should the townhouses go? Should they be uh, divided up? Should they be um, clustered? Uh, the different uh, built form along the local corridor. For transportation and mobility, to decide uh, where the collector road should be. Um, the principle here is to reduce dependence on personal vehicles and prioritize active transportation. Um, really important here uh, for active transportation to get the residents out of their car for short trips. So if you can get on a trail or a multi-use path to ride your bike or walk, um, to a close store, um, that's really important. We wanna minimize the impact on the environment. So we'll be looking at where those roads cross um, and how they cross and uh, how they might need to be mitigated. Uh, the different um, ability for the future local roads to connect in and intersection spacings along arterial roads. Those are all the things that we'll look at as part of the transportation natural environment uh, and the environmental protection areas, which was that all that green area on the different alternatives. Principle here is to protect, enhance and value significant natural features within um, and adjacent to the EPA. Um, so where trail connections are appropriate, uh, we wanna have successful trails that minimize the impact, but provide a nice environment for people to use. Um, and compatibility with land uses, that's a big one. Parks and open space, uh, we talked a lot about the different um, parks. So uh, in the different alternatives, we wanna encourage parks and open space that are highly visible, accessible and usable. Um, so the municipality has certain requirements for facilities. How do we make sure the parks that get delivered accommodate those um, facilities? And how do the park spaces really help create a neighborhoods and a sense of place, uh, opportunity for gathering where people want to go and play and hang out. Uh, sustainable servicing and stormwater management. Um, so this will be looked at um, through the different options to make sure servicing is viable, that it's, it's more sustainable and the stormwater um, function is met. <clears throat> cultural heritage as I mentioned the right now the plan indicates where those uh, cultural resources um, are uh, and the principle here is to respect both the natural and cultural heritage through conservation and appropriate incorporation into the community and for us the next steps um, you'll see uh, a lot of what we went through in our presentation uh, will be um, expanded on in our land use alternatives and infrastructure plans paper, with, which uh, will get posted uh, on the municipality's uh, website. Uh, we'll do a, a summary report of uh, what all has happened in phase two. Uh, and then next, we'll be taking everything that we've heard tonight, we'll be doing our evaluation, and we'll be coming up with a preliminary preferred land use plan um, that will get evaluated and finalized. And then that's what gets used as the foundation for the secondary plan policies. So um, 
questions and answers. I didn't, I think. Yeah, we've got this slide here. So just a reminder to everyone on how they can participate this evening. Um, Sheikha's going to um, monitor the chat and give us your questions. And uh, whoever the, the uh, person is necessary will give you an answer or um, get back to you. Uh, if you're on the phone, you can um, put your hand up by pressing star nine. Um, and star six, uh, obviously you won't be able to put your question in the chat. So uh, you can unmute yourself and um, ask your question that way. Uh, and just a reminder, uh, the survey will be posted online um, likely towards the end of next week um, and uh, you can always email um, staff and the previous information is on the clarington.net at Soper Springs. <clears throat> Thanks Catherine. So I just wanted to to explain that if you had trouble participating in the polls this evening we will be uh, providing an op another opportunity for you to answer those questions. So we'll have a survey um, posted on our website and we'll be sending out an email to those in attendance this evening, um, the survey link. So you can participate that way if you needed a bit more time or had difficulty with the live polls this evening. So there's more opportunity for you to share your feedback. It's not just this evening. Of course, if you have any questions after this evening, um, you can send me an email. My email address is on the screen here, Emily Schaefer. Uh, and we will answer your questions tonight that we have in the chat box. So I'll just read out some of the questions we've received so far. Uh, first is from Kimberly. Kimberly. Uh, why was a decision made to put a roundabout and not a traffic light at Liberty and Concession? So, Emily, I don't know if yes. Karen can address this. This would be um, something that mm -hmm. would have to be come from the region, but Karen might have some background. That's correct, Catherine. The Liberty Street is a regional road, so they would have made the decision I believe they asked for public input early in 2021. So, but they, when the information that I can find, it was already decided that there was going to be a roundabout. They had gone through an analysis and decided that was the best scenario. Okay. Thank you, Karen. Uh, second question from Hadi is, why is there no active transportation infrastructure on the other collector road in Alternative 3? Um, so from a, an alternative perspective, what we try and do is provide different alternative, different components in each so that we have something to evaluate it against. So it doesn't mean that it's right or wrong, that it will happen that way. It means that we can evaluate alternative three against alternative two or one. And uh, if it seems inappropriate that that other collector stays as part of the evaluation, uh, does it stay and have an MUP? Um, so that's kind of the, the uh, process that the different alternatives um, will go through now. Hopefully that answers the question. <clears throat> uh, so in the chat box, Connor H asked uh, did to, to define what a multi-use trail is. And Radita Goes from uh, TY Lynn responded that a multi-use trail is typically located within parks or outside uh, your public roadway, right of ways. They're typically three meters in width and they serve various types of active transportation users such as cyclists, pedestrians, um, and so on. So just reading that out in case you don't have access to the chat box. Uh, the next question is from Dave Winkle um, asking where environmental studies can be found. 
Yes, so that's a good question. We do have all of the background studies posted on the Soper Springs webpage. And if Shika or Catherine, if you could go back to the previous slide. Um, the link will be there, www.clarington.net backslash Soper Springs. And you can find all the background studies there. The one thing, um, Emily, that we should mm -hmm. mention um, is the subwatershed study. Correct. So um, that is a component of the environmental work that's being done, and it, it runs concurrently, but that's not um, part of our background work. It, it speaks back and forth with the subwatershed study, but the subwatershed study is um, ongoing as well. <clears throat> um, so next question um, is again from Dave, uh, how many trees will be removed from this area? Uh, Emily, I don't know if you want to take that one. <laughs> I, I think that uh, obviously as few as necessary, and that's uh, where you see the difference between the developable land and the environmental protection. That's where a majority of the trees are located. So they're protected as part of um, Clarington's uh, OP. Uh, obviously in the areas of development uh, in the future, there may be a few trees uh, removed, but they will also be trees that are uh, replanted and replaced um, when implementation um, goes forward in the future. Yes, yeah, so protecting the environment, particularly in this area, is one of our top priorities. So as Catherine mentioned, we are completing the subwatershed study or in, in the process of this, um, creating the subwatershed study. Um, and that study will essentially outline how these areas are to be protected. So great question. Um, right now, uh, we're, we're working on the subwatershed study, but as Catherine mentioned, there's developable land. Um, once at the subdivision stage of development, um, there'll be studies done and more detailed analysis will be done at that point. Thanks for your question. Okay, um, follow-up question from Connor, uh, asking when the active transportation master plan will be released and how it would connect to the secondary plan. So I think this is a good question for Karen. Karen, if you're there. Thanks, Emily. Uh, yeah, great question, I believe. So I followed up with staff after the last PIC on the status for the the active transportation master plan for Clarington. They don't have a timeline as of yet. Hopefully we will figure one out soon. It is being worked on. And what happens is, is the active transportation is a very high level overview of the whole municipality. And then the secondary plan would build on that and provide more detail for what the active transportation plan would look like for that secondary plan. And it also looks at connections and things like that. Those are all the things that we're looking at from the secondary plan. Thanks, Karen. Thank you. So some more questions here uh, from Hadi again. Would the only type of housing in low density areas be single and semi-detached homes? Why not allow all types of low density housing within those areas? Um, I guess uh, we need to understand um, what specifically other low density housing um, you're thinking about, um, but definitely uh, that's something um, that we would look at uh, if it was feasible. Um, in the low density right now, there's singles, semis, and townhouses uh, that are permitted. 
Um, so uh, I would encourage you uh, maybe to put in some suggestions uh, in the survey that might help us understand uh, different types of low density housing that you think might be feasible. Okay, a uh, question from Paul. Uh, what is the highest building that could be put on these lands? So the highest building along um, the local corridor, which is along Concession Road, which is 100 meters deep, uh, would be six stories. That's all the questions we have so far. Um, please feel free to send some more if there are any. Yep, we can give another few minutes for any additional questions people might have. And like I said, we will have similar questions that we posed today in the live polls in an online survey um, that, that I'll be sending out shortly directly to, to you. And it will also be posted online on our project webpage, um, www.clarington.net backslash Soper Springs. So you can share your additional feedback or comments. We'll have open-ended comment boxes. So you don't, if you have additional um, thoughts or, or things you'd like to see, you can add them there. And, and if online is too, too much of a hassle, I can print out a copy of the survey and you can fill it out uh, manually. So there's options there if, if online doesn't work for you. Uh, we have a few more notifications in the chat box. Uh, question from Dave. What will be done to protect the water quality of Soper Creek? Um, so again, this is a, a specific subwatershed study comment. Uh, um, and that there'll be measures mitigation uh, measures that come out of the subwatershed study, um, as well through um, the secondary plan work, there'll be um, policies that speak to um, sustainability. Uh, there'll be other work related to the stormwater ponds. Um, so there is a number of, of components that get, get put in place to protect the, the um, water quality. Um, and both the secondary plan and the sub watershed study will come together to make sure that those policies reflect, reflect the recommendations in the sub watershed study. Um, Thanks, Catherine. Yeah, I'll just add um, Dave, I think that was Dave who, who asked the question and so like Catherine mentioned, we have an ongoing subwatershed study. There are two different projects, but they're connected. So if you're not uh, involved in the subwatershed study, I would encourage you to, oh. uh, to participate in that project. And I can send you some information directly, Dave, um, uh, so that you can be put on an, the interested parties list for any updates for that project. So uh, I'll be in touch with you. Kimberly has a question. Considering what stage we are currently in, what is the anticipated timeline for building? Um, well, once the secondary plan is finalized, it really is up to the landowners and the developers um, to do their work with regards to the draft plans. Um, so I can't really say after the secondary plan is done what timeline is for actually putting a building in the ground. But as, as far as the secondary plan timeline goes, um, we're looking at 2023, um, but like Catherine mentioned, um, it would be up to the developers as to when they'd like to start construction in that process and the development process. So we're not quite there yet. Um, so that's why we're looking for your feedback 
here tonight and we will be as the project moves forward. We wanna know if you have any uh, concerns or anything you like, anything that you saw tonight, um, please share your feedback with us um, so we can take this into consideration as we move forward. No more questions so far. We can give it some time. Sure, yeah, we can do another couple minutes and then I think you know, it's safe to say we can wrap it up. I think. I think everybody's fallen asleep, Emily, so. <laughs> okay. Oh, there. Ryan has weighed in. <laughs> okay, everyone. So uh, thank you so much for, for joining us this evening. I know it's a busy time, um, but we wanna say thanks so much for taking the time out of your evening to, to listen. And of course, if you have any questions, you can reach out to me through the Soper Springs at clearington.net email. You can email me directly um, and I'll be sending you the, the online survey shortly. Okay, so take care and everyone have a great evening. Thank you so much. Thanks everyone. Thank you, take care. Bye. Bye.